Welcome back to our series of training videos on the Leica SP5 Cunt Focal Microscope. Now we're going to look at some actual live images generated by the microscope of a cross section of corn. You'll see this on the monitors as we continue. In this case, we have selected Fitzy Tritzy from our pull down menu, which activates the proper lasers with the proper amount of power. It turns on the photomultiplier tubes. Here you can see the first photomultiplier tube engaged with the gray line that shows it's turned on, and the second photomultiplier tube. Each one is set to receive information from the emission spectra generated here on the screen. If we go to live, we now see on the right screen the images of our corn in two different colors. We're exciting at two different wavelengths and we're recording emission information also in two different wavelengths. Now you'll see that we have two screens divided by a square. We can click on one square or another square and it'll allow us to work on that particular image. If we, if we choose to work on the first image, we need to see that the light is not evenly illuminated and it's not as bright as we would like. At this point, we want to increase our smart gain using our, our toolbar, which is on the desktop. So we dial the smart gain up, and as you can see, the image becomes brighter and brighter. Rule of thumb is to have the smart gain somewhere between maybe 895 and 920 volts. And that gives us a pretty decent image at that wavelength. We double click on this screen again, now we can click on the right screen and control the smart gain for this image as well. Once again, we're looking for a smart gain of about 900 volts. And so you see here, I'm raising the voltage to about 900. And if we look at the right screen, we'll see that the image is a little bit washed out. It's a little bright. Since I'm at 900 volts on my smart gain, this tells me that my laser power can be lowered. And so if we go over to the left screen, we can lower the power of the 543 laser by diminishing the power applied to the laser. You can see that this now returns a better image that's not as washed out as before. The other tool that's important on the toolbar in getting a good image is the smart offset. The offset should always be a negative number usually minus two, minus three, somewhere in that range. What we're essentially doing is we're controlling the sensitivity of the photomultiplier tube with these two controls. The photomultiplier tube is recording and counting photons that are coming off the image. Again, I want to keep my laser power low and increase the gain and offset of my photomultiplier tube so that I reduce the photo bleaching that takes place in my image and I reduce the amount of wear and tear on the laser. So a good rule of thumb is 900 on the smart gain and a negative number of three to four or five on the smart offset. Once again, I will double click on my image and again, I can see my my two captured images and my composite image which is generated by the computer. I also have another photomultiplier tube that can be used for transmitted light. So I'm going to press stop, stop the live imaging, and now I'm going to select the photomultiplier tube for a bright field image. Again I go back to live, I'm now collecting three different images, but the bright field image you can see is very dark. Let's double click on that, and my smart gain is very low. So I'm going to increase my smart gain until I start, start to see my transmitted light image. I can also control the offset so that I get good contrast. Now I have a combination of three images, including two fluorescent images and a bright field image that are output to my screen. So to look at my live image, I'm going to click on the live tab. And once I click on it, I can see that I have a live image on the screen. At this point, I can control my smart gain and my offset and make sure that my image is well balanced. If I want to capture an image, then I press stop. 
turning off the live image. And then I come over here and I press capture image. And this will now capture an image with each one of the photo multiplier tubes that have been turned on. Here you can see my PMT1 image, my PMT2 image, my PMT3, which is my transmitted light bright field, and my composite image. These are now stored images in the digitizer. However, they're only stored in RAM. If I want to capture this one image and put it under my experiment folder, I have to right click on the image and I select Snapshot. Snapshot will take this one picture and put it over in my experiments folder. So if we go over to the experiments folder, I'll click on the tab here, and now you can see this image right here is the one that we just captured. However, this is still in RAM. This information has not yet been saved to my user file. If I want to save this information permanently, I go down to Save All, and my screen comes up. I select Computer, D Drive, Users, and then I select the folder that I want to save my images to, and I click on Save. Then my information, my pictures, all of my experiment information is saved into my folder. So don't forget to save regularly under your Experiments tab in order to keep the system from crashing.